I really wanted to make this video sooner. I was held back by a visit to Six Flags where I ended up getting a sunburn and that really set me back. And after that, I learned about something horrifying that kind of slowed me down emotionally. Now, it's not something that affected me or my friends and family in any way, but it's still a pretty dark thing to learn about, and I really encourage people to not look around for it. It's really best that people don't know about it. I learned that Adam West passed away on the night of June 10th, 2017. I spent the night faving stuff honoring his memory on DeviantArt, and took some time to look over his work on shows like Fairly Odd Parents and Family Guy. He also made notable cameos on other shows like Johnny Bravo, The Simpsons, and Rugrats. But the first thing that comes to many people's minds when they think Adam West was his role as the caped crusader, Batman himself. Even if it was a more upbeat and sarcastic version of the character as opposed to the dark and brooding one that we've come to know since the days of the animated series. I grew up recognizing Adam West fondly enough as I saw his work in several shows and movies. However, on the eve of his death, one of the first things that crossed my mind was his appearance in the Batman animated episode, Beware of the Grey Ghost. And after taking time time to watch it again, I learned that that's not a really bad thing to think of when you think of Adam West. It's hard to decide if it's amongst the best episodes of the show, considering that there were many, many other episodes with much more compelling writing. But the way that this episode in particular is written, the way that it's presented, and the way that it tackles its themes while having Adam West guest starring in the episode certainly makes it a unique one. The story is that Batman is trying to figure out the mystery behind a series of bombings that are occurring in Gotham. He soon learns that these bombings have the same pattern as what he saw in an episode of The Grey Ghost, a show that he watched as a child. Desperate for clues, he tracks down the original actor named Simon Trent, played by Adam West himself. Simon is struggling with his feelings regarding his fall from grace as an actor and what kind of toll fame can have on a person once the time of their relevance has passed on. Conflicted with the feelings that he's having, as well as this trust that he and Batman are forming in pursuit of this villain, Simon must help the caped crusader discover the truth behind the attacks while regaining his motivational spark. There's a lot of really good factors concerning the episode, one of them being the music. It has a very energetic orchestra throughout and mixes up its tone to properly convey additional meaning to each scene. The Grey Ghost theme in particular has a good ring to it, feeling like something that you would hear from an old superhero show. It can have a lot of heroic notes fitting the dramatic weight of the story's presence. The episode is also paced very well. It knows not just how to set up a good mystery, but also how to build it up as the story unfolds. It's presented in a way that gives the problem-solving a sense of intrigue, showing the process of looking for clues, piecing evidence together, and tracking down people with a connection to the crime. Even taking little hints and making them an important factor in figuring out how to predict the attacks and who's setting them up. It also has moments of suspense that are actually very effective at catching the audience off guard. Some of these elements may be familiar for this type of story, but the episode still shows them in a way that feels refreshing, even for the time this episode came out. It eases into each trick that it uses, effectively creating tension and raising the stakes. And even as it approaches the climax, it maintains a balanced sense of tone. From the way it begins, with a charming segment of Brooch watching the Grey Ghost as a kid, to the solemn focus on Simon and his developing relationship with Batman, it's all a greatly put-together episode. What I really love about the episode, though, is the characters and the development they go through. For one thing, this episode of the show portrays Batman, or Bruce Wayne, in the light that is very rarely seen from the character. Instead of portraying him as a brooding force struggling to find happiness in his life fighting against crime in the name of vengeance for his parents, we actually see him as a relatable everyman. This is a light-hearted view on the caped crusader, and it manages to present that in a satisfying way. He was an imaginative boy moved by the adventures of the Grey Ghost as a child. So much so that he based his entire persona, even the design of the Batcave, after the show. He sees Simon as an idol not because he was an actor who played a character he really likes, but because he's a person who inspired him, who encouraged him to be somebody, to do something meaningful with his life. Even as he sees that Simon no longer believes himself to be the Grey Ghost, he still admits he admires what he stood for, being a hero to others and making the city a better place. He doesn't take Simon's denial to heart, and he continues to think of the Grey Ghost as a symbol for what he's fighting for and what he represents. The episode also focuses on a simpler and innocent part of his life, how he was just an excited kid and how he and his dad bonded over this TV show. 
It shows how the Grey Ghost ties into Bruce's early years and how he grew up to take after the show's themes, which helps him to recognize the bombing. Rather than have it be awkward to see Batman dedicating a portion of his cave to a TV show out of fanboyism, it shows that Batman's ties with the Grey Ghost are much more deep and meaningful. He's not being a fanboy, he's being a loyal companion paying his respects, which is actually pretty in tune with his personality. There's also a bit of interesting character from Alfred. His brief cleaning of the show collector's counter fits with his symmetric and cleaner living style, and it's a nice gag seeing him working off of this environment without having to say a word. There's also some hints that he's happy to see Bruce like this while he's watching the Grey Ghost as an adult. For the first time in so long, Bruce is being more than just a hero endangering himself for the city. He's being a humble man returning to a part of his life that was simpler and easier to relate to. As his adoptive father, it makes Alfred happy to see that Bruce is finding a sense of peace in his role as Batman. But easily the biggest and most important element of the episode is Adam West himself as Simon Trent. Perhaps the most important thing about Simon Trent is exactly how Adam West plays him. He does the role in a way that's appropriately dramatic and treats it with a lot of respect. Unlike most of his other roles where Adam West is portraying the character as a caricature of himself, Adam West voices Simon Trent in a way that makes him feel like a real actual human who's his own person. He becomes a character unique to this episode of Batman both story-wise and as a piece of Adam's history. This is a very personal role for West to take on, as he finds himself portraying a washed-up actor who's lost his relevance and can't find any work because of it. The world only sees him as that guy who played the Grey Ghost, making him an alienated member of society. He hates how his most iconic role potentially screwed up his life, which is shown in the scene where he smashes all of his Grey Ghost collectibles. Now he's just a bitter old man, trapped in a hopeless position, consumed with despair as he can do nothing but curl up against the wall and cry. It's an emotional moment that doesn't feel forced, as the audience is allowed to properly understand Simon's current position and how he's going through the downsides of having and losing fame. When Batman approaches him for help, he stands up to Batman in a way that shows how he's trying to distance himself from his grey ghost role. At first he explains how he doesn't know anything about fighting crime and drives Batman out of his apartment by giving him the only remaining copy of the episode that he has in his collection. He tells Batman that he's not the Grey Ghost both because he's telling Batman that he isn't sure he can help him and because he's grown impatient and bitter towards society constantly labeling him as the Grey Ghost. But when he's given time to himself, he takes a moment to think about Bruce's words and how it's possible that his role as the Grey Ghost can still do some good for Gotham. He returns to Batman later dressed up in his grey ghost suit. And when they get to the Batcave, Simon is amazed as to how everything Batman does is modeled after his show. He comes to realize that his role as the Grey Ghost left behind a more meaningful legacy than he previously thought. He becomes proud of how the role that he left behind has made a difference in the lives of others in more ways than one. And realizing this is what gives meaning to his line, it wasn't all for nothing. And at the end of the episode, following the defeat of the Mad Bomber, he becomes a public figure who has a newfound appreciation for his previous role. Having learned that he needed to embrace his former role as the Grey Ghost in order to save the city, he's finally found a new purpose in his life. He welcomes the Grey Ghost back into his existence, and his return to the role seems to be improving his life. The city now sees him as a hero who helped Batman defeat a threat to Gotham, and not just a washed-up actor. With society giving him a new sense of appreciation, Simon is now more hopeful. Not just because he's back on his feet, but because he's found a new meaning in living. He sees the value of how anyone can make a difference if they put effort into it. The last bit is a fitting sense of closure for Simon Trent, Bruce Wayne, and their newfound camaraderie. As Bruce buys a copy of the show from Simon, he gives him a hint to who else he might be via a familiar choice of words. The two then head their separate ways, proud of the trust that they gave one another. The team-up between Batman and the Grey Ghost, due to the choice of casting and how the story is set up, can easily be seen as this new Batman joining forces with the original Adam West Batman. And even the tone of the story itself seems to be influenced by the Adam West show. The thing about this crossover is that there's a delicate approach to it and a strong respect for the idea itself. They don't treat it like a silly gag, they behave very straightforward with the concept, which makes the story more relatable and insightful. Kevin Conroy and Adam West do a great job supporting each other and contrasting their differences. The teamwork and friendship of their characters is paced evenly and it becomes an important driving force in the narrative without feeling tagged on. For the time that this episode came out, this was a unique idea, and it was approached with an honorable sense of passion. There are some other things that are worth noting too. Obviously, the animation comes to mind. 
Like many episodes of the show, this episode's visuals put a lot of detail into making the story look highly cinematic. The detail they put into shadows and the designs of the backgrounds feel like they have a lively sense of variety, making the settings feel more interactive with the characters and their actions. There's a good mix of color schemes too, along with a different number of camera angles that are put to good use. It really feels like you're watching a comic come to life, and it fits with the style that the series and its tone work towards. It may seem low budget at times, and a few designs do look off-model, but it's mostly a visually intriguing experience. The episode does have some loony writing, such as using a flamethrower by a public library, the Batmobile being unable to outdrive some toy cars, Batman being unprepared for a common situation, and destroying a city block and congratulating themselves for it. I'm guessing the writing is taking itself less seriously because of how it feels like an homage to the Adam West Batman, which actually works to this episode's advantage. It never gets distracted from what it's supposed to be by forcing any dark turns into the story, which actually helps to make this loony writing feel justified. It melts with the tone that the episode sets for itself, making it refreshing amongst other Batman episodes. The Mad Bomber himself isn't really interesting, as he just has no defined character other than going mad with power, and his motivation feel very out of line. I would say more, but I'd rather not spoil the villain's identity for those who haven't seen it yet. Lastly, and most importantly, I adore the messages and morals this episode expresses. Through Simon's story, we see how he manages to find a way out of a tough situation, find a new purpose in life, and see how he can make a difference by simply being the Grey Ghost. But when you think about it, it resonates something very special alongside the episode's themes. A few times we see that Simon Trend was being denied work, and common ground in the community because of his old reputation as the Grey Ghost. This is something that happens quite often in real life. People always think of their celebrities based on iconic roles that they take on, and if it's done too often, we tend to forget who they really are. They're a person first and an actor second, and we should never forget that about the celebrities we look up to. We can think of them as people who act out iconic characters, but we must always know that they're just like you and me. The Grey Ghost was a hero who made a difference in Batman's life, which started a chain reaction of Bruce himself, making a difference in other people's lives. You think that's like Adam West's acting career in any way? How he may have made a difference in people's lives doing what he did? You may think that he was just another actor from Hollywood, but he actually was a hero to many people. Being a hero isn't just about fighting bad guys and saving the world, because being a hero can be much more than that. A hero is someone who makes a difference in people's lives, whoever and wherever they may be. And I think it's safe to say that Adam West did make a difference. Adam West was the type of celebrity who was very talented at poking fun at himself while taking it in good humor. He always managed to have a serious line of work, but nonetheless was kind-hearted and sociable towards those that he worked with. He was funny, and he showed great love for every role that he played a part in. He was widely known and beloved by many in the acting and voice acting culture, making his own mark in human history. That wasn't Batman who did all those things. It wasn't Mayor West, and it wasn't Catman. That was Adam West, the real Adam West. A man who breathed life into so many characters and inspired the lives of many more in the real world. I think that's what Beware of the Grey Ghost represents most about Adam West. The difference that he made in the world as a human being. This episode of Batman TAS is so much more poignant and meaningful now that he's passed on because it really does represent what Adam West's life represented. And in a way, it does make the episode one of the best in the show. Simon was seen as the Grey Ghost in the same way Adam was seen as Batman, but when people came together to truly appreciate them, they came to see the two as more than just actors. Adam West was more than an actor. He was an inspiration, an idol, and a good friend. And none of the roles that he played in his career will ever change that. So if you're watching this video and you knew Adam West as well as many others did, then take the time to watch Beware of the Grey Ghost. And think about how well it reflects Adam West's influence, as well as the lesson that it teaches. If you're going to remember Adam West, remember him the way that he's meant to be remembered. Don't remember him for his role as Batman or Mayor West or Catman. Remember him for what he was, a fucking legend.
Nobody messes with Adam Wee. <laughs> <laughs>